about, oh god, terrible. I'm out of practice. Let me try that again. <coughs> hey guys, it's Jess from Stark Skincare. Um, so I am about five months, I believe, into my curly girl hair journey. And I've seen my hair change in all kinds of ways in the past five months. Um, it's a little bit straighter now than it was a couple of months ago because it is winter and the air is drier and therefore I don't have a ton of humidity for my hair to um, curl into. However, I'm still loving my hair and I think that that's something very important to, to note for someone like me who, um, you know, I don't know if it's the perfectionist in me or whatever it is, but I feel like when I'm moving in a certain direction, if if I start to veer off course, i.e., you know, for example, my, my curls aren't as good as they were or as they can be um, to still accept it and to not feel like it's somehow um, th that it's not a failure is sort of a big deal for someone like me and I don't know maybe you can relate to that kind of sentiment maybe you're like okay she's nuts she's talking about hair here but <laughs> it's not just hair you know it's like a lot of stuff like that it's kind of like with weight loss or something like that any any self-improvement type thing where you are headed on one direction you're getting really excited you're really into it you're very obsessed with it and then all of a sudden there's some kind of backtracking and then often what happens is that you completely give up um, that has not been happening with me with Curly Girl, despite my hair being a little bit straighter right now than I know it can be. Which means to me that there is something very special about this method and that there's some things that I've learned that I feel like um, I really need to share because it goes beyond a little bit just trying to get nice curls um, and it has more to do with um, just self-care in general and kind of how we approach life in some ways. I don't, I don't know how Curly Girl can be so deep in some ways, but it really is. So here are six things that I've learned with Curly Girl that I feel like everybody can use no matter what hair type you have. So number one is treat your hair like it is fine silk. Um, this is actually something that I'd learned years ago, but I feel like I didn't really take it to heart until I adopted Curly Girl. So treating your hair like fine silk means washing it in the gentlest way possible with the gentlest products that you can. So for Curly Girl, of course, that means sulfate-free, uh, paraben-free. Well, you'd have to look into all the rules for Curly Girl. I'm not really going to go into those specific rules because there's a lot of resources on that, but... Um, it really just comes down to washing your hair in the most gentle way. So that means not doing no poo. That doesn't mean baking soda and vinegar on your hair twice a week. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, constant detoxing. It doesn't mean, you know, using harsh, uh, too harsh of a, of a um, shampoo in your hair and then just going nuts on your hair. Your, there's no way that your hair is that dirty unless you've been rolling around in some cow manure or you were just tar and feathered like there's no reason um to be washing our hair forcefully um and it's funny because since then i've you know you know having guests over or whatever i've like heard a few people washing their hair <laughs> it's just such a weird but and i you can hear um scrubbing you should not be scrubbing your hair. Treat your hair as though it is vintage fine silk. You would never scrub fine silk with something harsh. Um, you would be rinsing it with as cool water as you can, using the gentlest detergent or, you know, soap shampoo that you can find and, you know, just treating it with a lot of respect. And that also goes with how you tie your hair up, um, not using regular rubber bands god forbid not using regular hair elastics using something like invisibobbles or scrunchies are back in style now which is great and you know something that um really just disperses the tension of the elastic band itself so what this does is you know it's kind of simple physics instead of it just being a line of tension 
the tension is broken up and so you're not having um, like one area that's being held tightly. Um, so that really, you know, that really, really helps your hair. And all of these little things of, all of these little ways of showing your hair a little bit of respect and gentleness truly goes a long way um, after time. So number two is learn the curly girl rules and then break them. So curly girl, for so many people, we get super obsessed and I'm still quite obsessed. I'm just not at the level of obsession that I was at a couple of months ago. I have new obsessions now as it, as it were. Um, but it's great to dive right in so that you understand as much as you can about hair and about your hair so that you have a really good uh, basis to, to, to work off of. So understanding um, all the different curl types. Now it doesn't matter so much if you have 1C hair or 3A or 4B. Um, it, what, what matters is understanding that there are differences, understanding that your hair has specific needs, and that means that someone who has similar hair type to yours won't necessarily be able to recommend the right product or the right routine for you, but it's worthwhile to learn all of these things and to try stuff out and to be a bit of a scientist on your hair so that you know, um, you know, what rules you can follow and what rules you can break. So for example, I know that I have 2A, 2B, 2C, and 3A hair. <laughs> so I have a really big uh, range of um, texture in my hair, but more importantly, I have extremely low porosity hair, which means I've got really healthy hair, which sounds like a really good thing. And it is a good thing in some ways, but it also means that products slide out of my hair, that my hair has a really hard time um, absorbing moisture and holding on to that moisture. So once it's dry, it is hard to get it back up to that moisture level um, that we need. Um, you know, so understanding low porosity has been really important to me, but more important, it's been about understanding my low porosity. So, you know, um, one of the rules with Curly Girl is that you, you know, you have to style your hair soaking wet, and you'll hear that a thousand times. And I can do that, but I actually get better results if I style my hair when it's damp, or if I let my hair completely dry, and then I go in with my uh, Flarisol mister and, and some product and start working on my hair after I've seen what it looks like dry with no products in it. So that is like very few curly girls um, talk about this method. Um, Janelle Shaughnessy is one that does talk about it. Um, but you just don't see that as being a rule and it took me a really long time to sort of break that rule and um, I was afraid of not putting any I remember like my first several weeks I was afraid of not putting any product in my hair while it was soaking wet <laughs> but then I did it a few times I just let my hair air dry with no product just because I you know whatever just things happen I just didn't get around to doing it and I realized that my hair looked really good without product too and then some days it didn't. So it was really just about um, knowing all the rules so that you know how to, how and when to break them. So it, it, it's a little counterintuitive because it's like you want to have a certain protocol to um, follow and that's fine for the beginning, but um, it's also about knowing enough so that you can break those rules when need be. So we're never gonna get through this list. Um, number three is to accept what you have and then time, take the time to accentuate what you have and not fight it. So, you know, sometimes my hair is curlier than other times, but you know, whenever my hair is straighter, sort of like, like it is today, I'm not gonna fight my hair by, you know, taking a curling iron to it or whatever. I just accept that, um, you know, I have a diversity of texture and that it can look nice straighter just as it can curlier and it's not a contest to get to the curliest hair that you possibly can it's just about um, loving what you have and accentu accentuating that and accepting that and taking the time to care for your hair as it is you know I used to always think that I had really really fine limp hair I'm sorry but this is not fine limp hair I have a ton of volume I have 
lots of glorious healthy hair and it's taken me a really long time to learn that and to accept that so I'm not going to beat myself up because my hair is not the curliest it can possibly be I'm going to love my hair as it is today because it's still pretty hair and I and I can actually accept that and um, I love that because it's a very uh, French girl chic kind of thing to do is to love and accept the features that you have and um, to play those up so you know I've got like quirky weird curls that pop out of nowhere and I've got straight bits but you know that's part of the charm of my hair and um, it's a very freeing experience to just accept that just just as it is um, number four is to make habits out of your care rituals so it's really important to keep up with um, doing hair masks, uh, using Olaplex 3 if you have damaged hair, you know, making a routine out of that because if you just do something once, that those results, they're not going to last for months and months. It's really about what you do every day, what you do every week. So um, it's really important to do your deep conditioning, to do masks, um, to incorporate all the things that you've learned about what can really make your hair healthy and to stick with it because if you start skipping it over and over and over you're not going to see the results anymore tip of coffee now number five is really similar to number two and that's about experimentation so it does take quite a bit of time to learn the products that your hair likes the methods that your hair likes um, but don't be afraid to experiment so if you can get the sample sizes that's great lots of companies will offer sample sizes um, diva curl makes smaller ones um, jesse curl make sells these or no i think they're free you just pay for shipping these teeny tiny little packets um, there's ways of you know maybe just splitting with another curly person in your life some products so that you can try different things because I mean, this isn't a good uh, method for product junkies, or maybe it's great, I don't know, depending on how you want to look at it, because there's a lot of products involved, and it takes quite a bit of experimentation to know whether your hair likes creams or gels or mousse, um, what kind of leave-in, what kind of weight your hair likes, and then it changes season from season two. So it's really, um, you, there's quite a bit of experimenting involved, so don't be afraid to experiment. And then the same with techniques. So for example, when I started, I wouldn't even pass a comb through my hair because, you know, Lorraine Massey's book, The Curly Girl Method, had said under no circumstances should you use a comb. Um, but as it turns out, I really like the Denman brush. So that's a particular brush that you might see pop up with in a lot of um, Curly Girl uh, routines. And I love my Denman brush. It really helps distribute product through my hair. It, it detangles my hair. It stops it from being um, looking so messy because I kind of get a lot of webbing and stuff. So um, for me, the Denman brush is great. And you know what? It does stretch out my curls a tiny little bit. But like I said, it's not always the race to get the most ringlets. Sometimes it's just whatever texture your hair wants to be, not forcing it to be anything it doesn't want to be and just to accept it as it is. You know, like you got some Farrah Fawcett flips instead of ringlets one day. Well, that's cool. You, you know, you have a little bit of variety. And um, that's one thing about the curly girl method is I feel like there's a lot of competition in getting the curliest, the curliest, the curliest, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. So do experiment with products with methods and with your hair just kind of sitting in different ways and just seeing how you feel you know maybe maybe you live for those curls um, but that means more product for you and you can't touch your hair as much maybe you just love your hair being really soft and touchable which is um, what I like I like being you know I like my hair feeling really good and, and touchable so um, I prefer that over ringlets so it's really worth experimenting with that kind of stuff and number six is a specific product recommendation, and it is silk pillowcases. Silk pillowcases are not extra. Silk pillowcases are life, okay? I'm telling you. I started using my silk pillowcase um, before I actually went curly girl because it's really great for your skin. It, um, if you're like a face sleeper or a side sleeper, it's really going to help eliminate a lot of those like sleeping lines that you get. And then as you get older, those sleeping lines take longer and longer to like disappear during the day. 
and it's great for your hair. There's a lot less snagging, you wake up with your hair a lot less frizzy, um, it keeps the moisture in your hair, and honestly, it just, it's a little bit of luxury that you can just enjoy every day that is just fantastic. So I found my silk pillowcase on Amazon. I think it was about $25. I ended up buying one for my husband as well um, because I want us to have matching pillowcases and also because he's got really curly hair and I want, um, and he doesn't really do much to it. So it's like my way of like taking care of his hair without him actually having to do anything. And um, he loves his silk pillowcase. I don't know, like I've heard, you know, beauty editors and just being like, silk pillowcases, really? Oh my God, that just seems like that's going just way too far. And I, I don't understand that attitude because silk pillowcases are amazing. Once you start using them, you won't want to go back to cotton. <laughs> Even like the night, like nice cotton, like really, really high thread count is nothing like silk. So um, if you don't like silk, then of course there's also satin. So get a, you know, a good high quality satin. Um, if, if there's bamboo satin or modal satin, I, I think that would be really, really beautiful. But you just want something that has no texture to it, like no, um, What's the word I'm looking for? That just has like the, the, the softest, softest, softest feel that you can get um, as opposite to like flannel as you can. So something with no pile to it. Um, it will make a huge difference in your hair and it's just you'll have the best sleep ever. So those are my six tips that anybody can incorporate about Curly Girl into the routine. It's really just about accepting what you have, um, treating your hair like the crown and glory that it actually is. Um, treat it with respect and your hair will really transform in a few months. Um, I've never loved my hair so much. Um, I used to fight it constantly. I used to think that I, it was limp, that it was this, it was that, and I truly love my hair now. And that is such a freeing um, experience because it is part of uh, body acceptance and um, you know every little bit every little bit helps so there you go no matter what your texture is incorporate some of these tips and you will love your hair a little bit more and you will love yourself a little bit more and that isn't shallow this is important all right so take care bye